I really hope I don't burst your guys' speakers out like I did in the last video I recorded. Sorry about that. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm in the street, and today, uh, looks like our recording software is working. Great. So, for the second time at 9 o'clock at night, we are recording a video about an Android device manager um, or a device management software called AirDroid. And it is really handy. And yeah, basically, what we're going to do is first we're going to go into our Android device and we are going to go to apps AirDroid and it's going to pop up with two things one will be a web thing that you can go to if you want um, or you don't even need to be connected to the internet to use this you just need to be on the same Wi-Fi network as a computer that you're connecting to so it gives you a private IP address for a light mode um, basically what this uh, app lets you do is it lets you connect wirelessly to your Android device and do all kinds of stuff with it. So we are going to cut to the desktop now and I will show you how this works. So as you can see we are now going to type in the IP address in a web browser as the IP that it gives us um, and now I've got this box just came up on my phone and I'll tap accept. Now in older versions it gave you a code on your phone to type into your computer but now it sends a dialog box to your phone that you have to click. Um, so obviously you can think about how that affects usage, but whatever. Um, you can, first of all, you can send texts, and I won't show you any of these people's numbers um, or any of my you know, private text messages, but you can send texts in an IM-like thing. Uh, so if you want to send texts in an instant messenger type fashion on your computer, you can totally do that. You can also uh, start phone calls, although it does not, I already tried this in an early recording, um, if you initialize a phone call in here, then it just calls the number in, on your phone, obviously. It doesn't use your, your desktop's microphone or anything. Uh, you can also change the language that you're looking at all of this in, and that would be sign out. We don't want to do that. As you can see, uh, we've got these widgets that you can drag around. This is a really uh, advanced web app, or a really powerful web app. Um, so this is all running in the browser, remember, of a computer. You can see how much of your phone's space is taken up, storage, you know what I'm talking about. You can look at it in detail and see like how much is taken up by music, videos, photos, other. Um, and how many of, like, how many messages I have saved, how many contacts I have saved. Now this toolbox uh, is uh, kind of handy. I will show you how to do some of this stuff in other apps over here, but for now, all you need to know is that, as you can see, file, uh, you can drag and drop files to go to your device, and I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. You can type in a URL. Now, this would not work um, for using your phone as a wireless hotspot, because if you type in a URL here, the URL opens in your phone, not on your computer, just to be clear. Uh, you can actually paste things to your phone's clipboard, which is really handy if you're trying to get a link or something or a password. And also apps, you can install APKs, uh, which is great. If there's an app that's not on the Play Store that you want to install, you can just drag them here and it will install it. Um, if you have root access on your phone, you don't have to worry about installing it yourself. So if we go over here, you can see some of the other stuff we've got. Apps, you can look through all of your apps. Um, as you can see, I don't have unknown sources right now, so if I had dragged and dropped an APK, it would not work. But it gives you a guide for that, apparently. Um, oh, that's really handy. It gives you a guide to uh, enabling APKs. But as you can see, we've got all the apps that we have. And if I want to, like, download one... Oh, cool. So maybe you can back your app up or something? Might not work for data, but we'll get to data in a minute. So that's cool. You can look through all your apps. The next thing we're going to look at is the file manager. Now, one of the biggest things that Android has going for it over iOS is the fact that it has a user-browsable file system. And you may not care about that when you're using apps and playing games and stuff, but let's say that you want to watch a movie. Now, with iOS, you would have to put the movie on your phone through iTunes, which you might say, oh, well, that's not a big deal. I have iTunes. But what if you're on a Linux computer? What if you're on a computer that you're not normally on and your phone isn't synced with iTunes? Uh, with Android, you can use this. You can use AirDroid to connect to a computer, go into the movies directory, and you can upload 
and I could upload any uh, movie I want. I could upload, let's see, I could upload Better Than Vlogs episode 12. Um, so yeah, I don't want to waste half a gig on that. But yeah, you can upload anything you want from any computer. You can basically use your phone as a portable wireless USB drive. And a lot of phones do plug into computers and you can access the file system. But a lot of newer phones actually don't let you access the file system. A lot of newer phones actually only let you access your camera, um, not actually any part of the file system, like the folders or anything. And that includes my phone, the LG G2. My old phone, the Atrix 2, I could plug it into my computer and use it as a flash drive, but my G2 does not let me do that. But AirDroid does let me do that. So yeah, as you can see, I can also browse through things like um, ringtones, I've got my Scheherazade ringtone, and I can download that to my computer. So you can download files from your phone to your computer. This is what I use to get uh, media onto my computer. This is what I use to get the camera things onto my computer. Uh, since plugging it in, it, uh, it's really buggy, the, the media protocol it's using. Because it's not just hooking it up, like I said, it's not hooking it up as a file device. It's hooking it up as a camera and it's buggy. So I use AirDroid instead to download videos that I record to my computer. So yeah, you can get to any of your device's files from here. That is so powerful. Just that alone would be enough to make this worth it. The next thing we're going to look at is the camera. You can launch up your camera, as you can see. Now I've got a camera, and I can turn around, I can put it into landscape mode, and also you can do some other fun stuff. I can switch it around to the front-facing camera, uh, as you can see, I can put it back to the backspacing camera. I'm sorry my voice is so scratchy. That's because I've recorded about 10 videos today, uh, which I'm only going to get two videos out of the 10 recordings. Anyway, you can see, you can turn on your, uh, your flashlight is what it calls it, but you can turn on your flash. Um, you can choose to take pictures and either take a picture, save it to your computer, as you can see, or you can choose to take a picture and save it to your phone or tablet. So I can take a picture and that just got saved on my phone. Uh, you can enter full screen, you can you know rotate it if it doesn't rotate automatically, but it's rotating automatically right now. So that's really cool. And here is, I think right after the file manager, here is my second favorite part of this, is the screenshot um, feature. <clears throat> the screenshot feature uh, you need root to get this, and if you don't know what root is, you're probably not rooted yet, uh, so you need to look that up. But you do need to be rooted to use this, and once you're rooted, you can use this screenshot feature, which lets you view your device's screen. And this is cool that it actually works like when you turn the screen off, um, and it works when you're turning the screen on, and you know, it works in all kinds of different apps. And ah, as you can see, I told you I would show you if I go to URL and I type in like uh, nerd on the street dot com, and I hit enter, it just opens on my device. So yeah, um, this is a really, really cool thing. And this only lets you take uh, screenshots as in pictures. However, there is a way you can use this to take uh, screen videos from your Android device. And that would be quite obviously doing exactly what I'm doing now. Use a desktop recorder at the same time as you're using the screenshot taker. And uh, yeah, there you go. As you can see, this is actually pretty smooth for, for going over wireless. Uh, I know obviously you could hook it up uh, with a cable and maybe get better performance, but that takes a lot of work. And all this is is an app. And obviously I'm rooted, which takes some work too. But yeah, that is um, one of the cool features as well. How long have we been going? We've been going long enough. So, yeah, like I said, this is a really great app. It's called AirDroid. And once I uh, exit, you can disconnect by tapping the disconnect button. Um, or you can just tap that and exit. Exit AirDroid. As you can see, my desktop says service stopped by device. And my phone just exits the app. And that is AirDroid. So you can use your phone wirelessly as a USB drive and you can get to its screen from it and you can use the camera and you can upload file. Well, I already said that. I know that it's a small number of features, it's a small list, but that small number of features is really, really powerful. So I highly encourage you 
to check that out. Maybe I'll put a link in the description if I feel up to it. So, yeah, I hope that you do look into that if you have an Android device. I've looked into similar things for iOS devices, and people just say, oh, use iCloud, which obviously isn't the exact same thing. But yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Make sure to give this video a like if you think that was helpful. And I'm Jacob Kaufman. I'm on the street, and I will see you later. See ya.